Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Real Money, Real Business podcast. I'm Lauren, and today we have Kester on the show, who's selling an Amazon FBA and e-commerce business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. Hey, Kester, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Well, I'm really excited to have you here. It sounds like you've got a really interesting business, so I can't wait to dive into that. But before we go into that in more detail, I'm just going to give the listeners a brief overview of the business so they know more about what we're talking about. This is an Amazon FBA and e-commerce business. It was created in January 2018, and it's in the supplements niche. The average revenue for the business is $77,743 per month, and it makes an average of $17,494 per month in net profit. The assets included with the business are an Amazon Seller Central account with 165 SKUs, a domain including all site content and files, secondary domains, employee contracts, supplier contracts and relationships, an eBay account, a Facebook account, and trademarks. Please note that inventory is not normally included in the list price, but further details can be provided to active buyers. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing number 62496 to learn more about this business. Or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So with that in mind, let's hear from the seller. Kester, can you fill us in on your background in starting and running online businesses? Yeah, well, I've been doing business my whole life, but I really venture into online business in 2018 with this specific business, trying to find a solution to the time amount that I'm spending in the business. I was spending a lot of time managing this business because I was running it through distributors and actual taking inventory to stores, things like that. And it was consuming all my time. So in 2018, I found a few videos about Amazon FBA and the benefit of FBA and how it will make my life easier and less time consuming to run a business. And that's really how I venture into the online market. Yeah, that's fantastic. That is definitely one of the benefits of Amazon FBA is it's a lot more passive than having to do it all yourself, as you said. You've also branched out into other e-commerce platforms to sell your products. Can you walk me through what other monetization methods you've got? Yeah, I'll say 98% of the revenue comes from Amazon. I'm doing it. eBay also. We have all the listings for all the products there, but I haven't put too much time into it. You have to notice this is not my only business. It's actually one of the smallest business I have. I have other business running parallel to this. So I have really only concentrated on Amazon because of the ease of doing business with them. Just sending the inventory directly from my supplier to Amazon and making everything easy in terms of managing the business. So I have concentrated mostly on Amazon. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like a good passive business to run. When you were coming up with this business idea in the first place, what made you choose to sell these particular products? Well, I always been into nutrition. So in 2012, I actually started this company and it started as a weight reduction program with just a selection of five products and protein shake, which I did a lot of research on to put that program together. And then the business evolved from there. In 2018, when I changed the model to online, I started uh, producing more products and adding more products into the line until what we have right now. We have over 150 SKUs on Amazon because I have a great team. You know, We have a great lab where we can custom products. And it's been very easy to add products to the line and do tests whenever we want to test new products into the market. Yeah. I mean, with that in mind, it sounds like you've been involved with this business for quite a long time now and that it is a 
passion of yours, the supplement niche. Why have you decided to sell the business now? Well, now I'm going into my other passion. I also, at the same time in 2012, I had a, an investment fund. I managed funds, trading, things like that. I designed trading strategies. So now I'm moving into the crypto market. I actually have a blockchain technology company, something completely different, but it's also a passion of mine. I see opportunities there, and I think it's time to move on, take the money from this business and sit it in that other business and move on that direction. Yeah, it's great that you were able to pursue both of your passions and this business has seen so much success over the years. Looking back over your journey with this business, what would you say was your biggest win since starting the business? That's a very interesting question because when I started this business online, as I said, I had no experience. I was going with my gut feeling, what I know about business. I didn't train, I didn't took classes and I just did it my way on Amazon Honestly, my goals for the first year was to be making 20000 per month in revenue. I'm happy. That was my goal at the end of the first year. At the end of the first year, I was already making over $60,000 per month. So I think that was a big win. I already had about 100 products in, although I didn't know much what I was doing. The products were moving. The brand was getting recognition and subscribers and followers. That's fantastic. You certainly must be doing something right to get that much growth so early on. I'm sure not everything went according to plan. What was your biggest setback or challenge? I'll say COVID presented opportunities, uh, sales increased, but Amazon restricted all the inventory during that time frame. It was very difficult to manage inventory. So I had to take most of the product out of Amazon and store them here in my office. There was a lot of products and that was a headache. So that was a kind of challenging. After that, which I think is good now for the new owner, after that, Amazon started asking for certification for all the products. So we have to go and provide proof and laboratory analysis, proving the ingredients that the label has, the nutritional facts panel is showing, are actually containing the product, so are true. Since I have a lot of products, 150, I have to go through that certification for all my products. I was a huge expense of about $2,000, $3,000 per product, plus the time consumed. It was a lot, but I was able to manage, go that phase in the past, and now everything is starting to move again in this new era, I'll say, of Amazon where products need to be certified. I have a great supplier. The great thing about it, he understand that. And all his products now, whenever you want to add a new product into the line, they already come with that certification. So it's easy now to add new products. Not many suppliers are doing that. So I'm grateful to have the suppliers I have. Yeah, absolutely. That could have been a much bigger challenge to overcome if you didn't have such great suppliers on your side. It sounds like you've managed to build up a good amount of brand recognition, especially, as you say, to be able to reach that $60,000 in sales in the first year. How do you drive traffic to your products? Are you using PPC campaigns or listing description SEO? Yeah, both. You know, all my listings are optimized by SEO, right, with keywords, and to make sure they're indexed correctly on Amazon. But I also do PPC, which has also been a challenge because I've been doing that myself in so many products. And I think there's so much potential. That's one of the setbacks I also have, managing the PPC myself, especially when we started with all these certifications and issues with the certifications. I really couldn't put too much time into PPC. And sales went down just because of that, because I think PPC is good for this type of product. It was driving a lot of traffic, but you have to dedicate some time, a couple hours every month, optimizing the PPC campaign so they work well. But they do work very well. I made a mistake of during that time of certifications and I was uncertain which products were going to stay and which I had to remove because I couldn't get certification. So I really reduce the PPC to really low levels. And you see, you can really pinpoint it the day where I did that, where sales starting to drop and they've been like that. So now all I have to do, if I had the time to do it again, if I don't sell the company, I would simply go back and turn on that PPC again to the levels they were 
The history is there. The new owner will be able to see all the history on Amazon. I would turn PPC back there and start optimizing again because it was giving great results. Yeah, absolutely. I think as the competition on Amazon has increased over the years, so has the importance of PPC. But as you said, it does take up a lot of your time. Are you doing anything over and above PPC campaigns to help drive traffic to your products? No, I haven't. I hope the new owners see us as a benefit. I'm being able to maintain these revenue levels just with uh, PPC and listing optimization. So there's a huge opportunity for whoever gets this company when I put the time on it to take it out to other advertisement and other sales methods, you know, and avenues. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, that leads me into my next question. And you've touched on a couple of these points already. But what do you see as the major opportunities for growth with this business? It's very simple. First, you know, you can expand into other markets, either actual brick stores on other online avenues that I haven't even touched. I haven't even touched Walmart. You know, I haven't even touched any of that. So you can go there. I haven't even touched international. I'm not just doing it in the United States, so that's a great opportunity there. Other opportunity there is the new owner can take advantage of my inexperience when I started this business because what you're going to see, many of the products, my products have great reviews, a lot of reviews, five stars, but they're not really selling much. So the new owner will see that and say, well, this is simple. I just need to re-optimize and relaunch this listing so that will be the first step he'll do, right? We optimize, get advantage of the good reviews and get those products going. And the other opportunity I already touched on it is simple to go back in history. I think it was July of last year. You're going to see it drastic when everything's starting to reduce in sale. And you'll see that exact point where I shut down the PPC or I reduce the PPC too much and I couldn't get it to it. So you go back to the history, try to reestablish everything to those levels and start optimizing again and get the sales back up again. Yeah, it certainly sounds like there's a lot of low-hanging fruit that the buyers can take advantage of. You mentioned earlier that you have a really great relationship with your suppliers. So I want to dig into your supply chain a little bit. Can you walk us through what your supply chain looks like? Where are your suppliers based? How does your inventory get from the suppliers to Amazon warehouses? 98% of my products come from one supplier, He's one of the largest in the nation. He has all the certification. He's great to work with. I have a personal relation with the owner, so I can pass that information. I can create that relation with the new owner also, put him in contact with him. And he's in the United States very easy. I just order for him. I have great minimum quantities of just like 72 units, which is very low. You can really manage and launch new products just to experiment. And so I ordered from him and he sent the inventory. I sent him the labels. I print the labels from Amazon, send them to him, and he sent the products directly to Amazon. It's very easy, very simple. Since I've been working with him so long, he has many considerations for me in terms of not only MOQ, you know, I don't have to pay before the, until the order is already on Amazon, established there. So I have many benefits. The other products I have, I started a pet line of products also, which I haven't put too much time, but I love how it looks. You know, when we have that appearance, I will grab the attention on any shelf or anywhere. So I have a few products there. I think there's 10 or so where I started the line. Those products come from another manufacturer. MOQs are a little bit higher, like 240 units. And that's the reason I haven't pushed those products. But He's also a great supplier, great communication, and I'm also glad to give the contact information for them to continue managing that line of products. Yeah, that's wonderful that you have such a great supplier on your side. Definitely a big asset for the business. When you order inventory, how long does it normally take for the supplier to produce the inventory and get it over to Amazon? It usually takes about 15 days, two weeks or less for them to have the products ready. And then, you know, we send it to Amazon, takes another two, three days and up to a week sometimes for Amazon to put the products back in inventory. So I'd say three weeks, you complete the whole process, four maximum, depending on Amazon. 
Yeah, that's fantastic. And I think definitely a big advantage to have a supplier in the country that you're selling your products in definitely cuts down on a lot of that turnaround time. When it comes to Amazon, do you know what your current inventory limits are at Amazon warehouses? Oh, yeah. The inventory limits have gone up. So thanks God that we don't have any inventory limit issues right now. And I am using, you know, my standard size storage is 53,618 units. From that, I'm using only 8,777. So yeah, there's a lot of margin for anybody to put more inventory or add new products and all that. Yeah, it's, it's great to have that flexibility available. So Kester, looking at a typical work week for you when running this business, you mentioned you started the business to help free up some time. What does a typical work week look like for you? How many hours do you spend on the business and what sort of activities take up your time? At the moment, not much. Maybe eight hours a week. I do the inventory myself, so I, I do that and send them to my supplier. I have a team in India, which is great. They manage day to day. You know, I usually, when I have any issues, I can easily do that. Just create claims on Amazon, things like that. Whenever I want to optimize a listing, I give it to them whenever I want to. So we're constantly, right now, a few weeks ago, I started optimizing listings just to have them ready. So we enhance a content to some of the listings, all that. So they manage all that. So they're a group of graphic designer and Amazon managing. So the new owner can take on that, or if he has his own team, he can do that. But me personally, all I do is lead them and review whatever they give me and review any optimization and all that, since I already trust them. So it's not that time consuming for me, or I'll say about eight hours a week. Yeah. I mean, it certainly sounds like you've managed to streamline your supply chain and streamline the amount of work that you do. So this really is quite a passive, easy business to run. Yeah. So with all of that in mind, what do you think the biggest challenge will be for a buyer taking over this business? I think a transition is going to be really simple and I'm here for them to answer any questions, you know, and drive in. I'm really flexible on that term. So I think the major challenge comes that I think they want to grow the company, right? So the challenge comes about expanding it to other selling channels you know, doing the PPC on 158 products and managing that. But if the new owner has experience on that, it should be, or he has hired a company to the PPC, it will be relatively simple. So I cannot really see any major obstacles. And of course, I'm assuming the person that's going to get the company already knows something about Amazon. But if not, I'm going to say the challenge will be he needs to learn the Amazon environment, right? No really major challenges. Yeah, that's great to hear. And as you say, as long as they know Amazon, then it should be smooth sailing from there. If they do run into any trouble, how much support are you willing to offer the buyer? I can support them anytime, as long as you know we schedule a meeting in advance. I can take them and we can talk on the phone. We don't need to be too formal. They can call me anytime. As long as I have the time, I'll talk to them. Like I said, flexible on that. And then like, if we say something formal, you know, let's say like three months, just to have a number in the contract, but I'm really here for them if they need something else additionally after that time. That's wonderful. I think buyers will be very reassured to hear that. When it comes time to actually negotiating the sale, would you be open to something like an earnout agreement? No, I prefer all cash in advance because the only reason I'm selling this, because you're thinking, wow, he's talking about this like it's a great business opportunity. In only eight hours a day, he can expand it while he's selling well, I want to use the money. I need the money right now in another opportunity, another company that, like I said, it's a blockchain technology. And we're launching the project in two months, a big project. It's actually a blockchain video game based on crypto. So I need the funds because I really gonna want to put all that money on advertisement for the last few weeks of the campaign. So I need the money up front. Yeah, that makes total sense. And yeah, that's your reward for building up such a steady business. So all cash up front certainly makes sense. Would you commit to a non-compete agreement? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, definitely. I'm not planning to do any supplement campaign, but I understand it's got to be in a contract for a few years. You know, I'm not going to be a competition to them. 
Okay, great. So Kester, for anyone listening who is in the same position you were a couple of years ago, where they want to break into the e-commerce industry, what advice would you give them that you wish you knew when you first started this business? Concentrate on the launch of the product. Make sure you launch correctly because you want to be able to rank your product. Not only put products on Amazons like I did the first year, but you also want to have a launching strategy. Understand how you rank products on Amazon and make sure you do a proper launching of your products that way. You know, honestly, if I tell anybody that knows about Amazon, if I tell them I have a 158 SKUs, the job will drop. A lot of SKUs in such a short time. You should be selling tens of millions. Well, I could, but I need to go back and relaunch some of the products. So I need to get the time to do a proper launch. So to me, that's the most important. If somebody new into Amazon, make sure you understand how to launch a product or find somebody that launched it for you that really understands how to do it. Yeah, that's fantastic advice and definitely something I think a lot of new entrepreneurs overlook. Well, that leads us to the final question of the interview. So, Kester, if you had to put yourself into the shoes of a buyer, why do you think your business is a business worth buying? Well, I think I mentioned that already, but in summary, I think the business has a lot of potential. They have a lot of cues to work with, and there are many with untouched potentials, many that were launched incorrectly by me at the beginning. But since I have been there for three years, I have many great reviews, and they can just be relaunch just that with a combination of PPC and if the new owner which I guess the new owner will buy this company because he has other means of expanding the business outside of Amazon so to me that's the perfect combination for a new buyer and that's what this business brings it's a great opportunity of a business that is only on one selling a channel Right. If I were buying a business, that's what I'm looking A business that is only set in one channel and an expert in other channels, let's exploit it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The business certainly ticks a lot of boxes. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners that I might have missed? No, I don't think so. I think that the most important point here is that to understand you know, that whoever gets a business is kind with my support. Like I said, I'm very flexible, very easygoing. So just... You know, they can help them to manage and lead them to the Amazon world too. So they get the business running as soon as possible. Fantastic. Well, Kester, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been wonderful talking to you. It certainly sounds like you've got a great business on your hands here. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. It's an absolute pleasure. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing number 62496. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.